Number 65. The vapor pressure of methanol, which is CH3OH, is 94 torr at 20 degrees Celsius. And then the vapor pressure of ethanol, which is C2H5OH, is 44 torr at the same temperature. And then we have letter A. We want to calculate the mole fraction of the methanol and of the ethanol in a solution that contains 50.0 grams of the methanol and 50.0 grams of the ethanol. Okay, so I guess we'll start off with letter A before we'll, we'll do B and C. So in this case, we want to just find the mole fraction. Now, they do give us specific masses for uh, the methanol and of the ethanol. So I say to myself, hmm, how am I going to find a mole fraction? Well, the mole fraction formula is this right here. Mole a fraction of any compound, which is represented by letter X. Do I know why they picked letter X? Oh, fuck. Do I know why they picked letter X? No, but X uh, capital X in chemistry is uh, reserved for the mole fraction. Now a mole fraction is for a specific compound. So in this case, since we have to find out the mole fractions for both methanol and of the ethanol, we're going to have to do this two times. Now just like any fraction, right, a fraction is always equal to a part divided by a whole. And that's what this formula is. Whatever compound you're trying to find out, it's just the moles of that compound divided by the total moles. Part divided by whole, right? The total. But grams, grams, uh-oh, they want everything in moles. I mean, it's called a mole fraction. So the first thing we have to do is we just have to convert the 50 grams of the methanol. They did say that methanol was CH3OH. And the, let's see, I guess we'll do the other one in blue. We also have 50 grams of the ethanol, which is C2H5OH. And we just need to convert both of these into their moles. How do we go from a gram value to a mole value? So moles of C, uh, CH3OH, and then go to grams to moles of C2H5OH. Well, grams to moles, we always just divide by the molar mass. I'll just title it MM. So get those periodic tables out. We gotta find out what the molar mass is of methanol. So I'm just gonna look for my atomic masses on the periodic table, and let's see. I have one carbon, so that's just a 12.01. Uh, I have three hydrogens here, plus another hydrogen, so that's a total of four, so I'll just plus four hydrogens. Each hydrogen on my periodic table is exactly 1.008, and then I have one oxygen, which is a 16. So 12.01 plus four times 1.008 plus 16, and everything looks good here. That is the molar mass of methanol. So I'm just going to take my 50 grams and divide it by the 32.042. So 50 divided by this number, and I get one point, I guess we'll say 1.5605 moles. Now when I'm taking my next calculations, I'm just going to use the values that are in my calculator. Um, I'm just going to, you know, round them here just so that I don't ride all these decimals out. But now we have to do the same thing for the ethanol, right? So we're going to divide by the molar mass. So now in this case, we have two carbons. So I'm going to say two times 12.01 plus I now have five hydrogens plus another one. So that's a total of six hydrogens. So six times 1.008 plus the last oxygen, which is 16. So two times 12.01 plus six times... 1.008 plus 14, nope, just kidding, 16. Everything looks good here. 
there's the molar mass for ethanol. So I'm just going to divide it by 46.068. So 50 grams divided by the molar mass. And I get roughly 1.0854. That's good enough. Okay. So now, let's start setting this up. We want to find out the mole fraction for the, eth uh, for the methanol. So we'll say CH3OH. And then we want to find out the mole fraction for the ethanol, which is the C2H5OH. Okay? This both equals those moles divided by the total, right? So we, we found out that the Moles for the methanol was 1.5605, and we found out the number of moles for the ethanol is 1.0854. But now the thing is, what's the total number of moles? Well, what do we have to do with these two values? That's the only, that's the only substances in our solution. So yeah, we just have to add them together. And if we add them together, I'm just going to take the total values up here. So the methanol number plus the ethanol number, and there's your total. So your total is 2.6458. That's good enough for me. Total moles. And that's the number that you divide by for both of them. So divided by 2.6458, divided by 2.6458. Okay, and once again, I'm going to take the total values that I have in my calci for these. So I'm going to get the methanol value, which was this number, divided by the total. And there is the mole fraction for the methanol, 0 0.590. I'll take that 7, round the 9 up to a 10, that's a 9, 0. And then we'll do the ethanol. So this is the ethanol divided by the total, and there we go. And if we did this correctly, we should take our two mole fractions, because those are the only things that are in the solution, and if we add them up, they should equal to one. Yay, there you go. Um, just know that mole fractions uh, do not have... Uh, units. So what we will do is we'll say, I guess what I'll do is I'll bring this up here and I'll bring this up here and I'll just replicate this. So I'll say, okay, the mole fraction equals, the mole fraction equals, we'll just make this a little bit better. So the mole fraction of CH3OH and then the mole fraction of the C2H5OH equals that and that, get rid of these, and now let's just color it in, right? This is the mole fraction for the methanol, beautiful, and then this is the mole fraction for the ethanol, and that is the answer for part A. Now, let's box this off from the rest of the uh, questions, just so that we have room for uh, the next part. So let's see. Maybe what I'll do is I'll split this down the middle. Okay. If if I need to, I'll just get rid of maybe the, this math up top here. So now let's go to B. So letter B says, ethanol and methanol form the solution. That behaves like an ideal gas. Okay. Calculate the vapor pressure of the methanol and of the ethanol above the solution at 20 degrees Celsius.
Now, the only thing we know about the vapor pressure at this point is what the vapor pressures are of the substances when they are just by themselves. They just said that the vapor pressure of methanol is 94 torr. This is assuming that you just have methanol in your, you know, you just have pure methanol. And if you just have pure methanol, the vapor pressure is going to be 94 torr. And the same thing goes for the vapor pressure of ethanol. They said that this was 44 torr at the same temperature. So this is assuming that if you did not have any other substances, that vapor pressure is going to be purely 44. But now we're having ethanol and methanol come together into the solution. This sounds like a Ryolt's law formula. Now, I, I kind of know that I'm, I'm dealing with different pressures because they did state that, you know, we do have multiple pressures in a solution, especially if we just found the mole fraction, we can use our mole fractions to help us out with what the now new uh, vapor pressures are by using this formula right here. Maybe I'll make this a little bit smaller. So this is just basically like a standard um, percent, uh, percent formula, but just written in a fraction form. Now, if we have the mole fraction of a certain compound, which is acting as just a fraction, which is, you know, the equivalent of a percentage, but just not times by 100, if you times that by the pure pressure, P stands for pressure, if you times that fraction by the pure compound, what the vapor pressure would be of the pure compound, you will find out what that pressure is in the solution. And that's exactly what we wanted to find out. We want to find out those new vapor pressures because the methanol and the ethanol are both in the solution. Don't really pay attention to, you know, above the solution. These vapor pressures are above the solution because they're just gases that are being let out. Vapor pressure, gas. So for both of these, uh, let's see. We want to find out the pressure in the, you know, for the compound in the solution. So... Maybe we'll say P of CH3, OH, would be the pressure that the pure one, they did state that that pure uh, methanol pressure is 94, and the mole fraction, so maybe I'll just put here, this is the same thing as the mole fraction, just what we found out. The mole fraction of the methanol is zero. The mole fraction for the methanol is the 0 0.590. So I'm just going to take that 94 and times it by the 0 0.590. So pressure of the new methanol in the solution would be 94 times by the mole fraction, which I'll take from this value right here. There it is. So 55 point, I guess we'll say four. Um, they do only give two sig figs for the, uh, the vapor pressure. So technically you should only have two sig figs at the end. And since this 94 was in tour, this has to be in tour as well. So we found out that new methanol pressure is 55. It makes sense because your new vapor pressure should be less than if it was pure. If you are, um, 94 tor, this means that you should only have one mole of the CH3OH, but your mole fraction is less than it. So your total pressure should be less. Now we just have to do the same thing for the ethanol. So the, the new pressure for the C2H5OH is the pressure that is pure 44 times by the mole fraction that we found out, 0 0.410. I'm just going to move this up a little bit. 
just so that I can fit letter C. I think we can fit it. Um, so let's see. Pressure of C2H5OH low is 44 times this guy. And there it goes. 18. I like that. 18 tor. Box that answer off. So those are your two new pressures for letter B. I am going to split this down the middle. And now we're going to put letter C over here. Letter C. Now calculate the mole fraction of the methanol and the ethanol in that vapor, which is above the solution. Okay. Now the cool thing here is that, keep in mind, remember, the mole fraction is just a fraction, right? There's no units, right? When we found out these mole fractions, there's no units. Now, generally speaking, the mole fraction should be coming from moles of the compound divided by the total moles. However, since there is no unit at the end, do we have to always get it from moles? No. The idea here is that you just need a part divided by a whole. And we just found out the components of the pressures of the methanol and the ethanol. So in this case, I'm not going to use my moles. I'm going to just use my pressures and act as if they were moles. Because all you just need is a part divided by a whole. I know my total uh, CH3OH is 55. The C2H5OH is 18. You could pretend that this is like 55 moles, 18 moles. How would you find the total moles, quote unquote? Yeah, you just add up these pressures, right? I mean, keep in mind that they are pressures, um, but it's the same type of idea. So in this case, the new mole fraction for C2, H5OH, does not matter that you have pressures. It's just a part over whole. So I'm going to use my 55. And let's do the same thing down here. X, the mole fraction of C2, H5OH equals the 18. But now 55 over what? 18 over what? Let's just add these two pressures up, right? 55 plus 18, if I just take these, these numbers that I have saved in there, I get roughly about 70, 73, right? 55 plus 18, 73. So I guess we'll do 73, 73. And I'm just going to make this a little bit less now for this, I guess I'll just do 55 divided by 73. Zero point, whoop, what happened there? 0 0.75, and then 18 divided by 73, 0.25 if we round. And that is your new mole fractions taken from the pressures because it's just a part over whole. That's all that it is. And I'll just write it over here, part divided by whole. It does not matter if you use moles. It doesn't matter if you use pressures. You just have to have two units that are the same, and one is the part and one is the whole number. That's it. What'd you think? I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. I look forward to helping you out and more questions. Um, keep rocking and rolling. Always keep learning. And thank you so much for, you know, coming here, getting your educational help uh, at this channel. We love helping you out, my brother and I. We appreciate you, you all. Thank you so much. And I'll talk to you soon, okay? All right. Have a great day. Bye-bye.